Christ is seen all throughout the Old Testament, from creation to the prophets. This Christmas season, I want to uncover the prophecies that foreshadow the life of Christ, to highlight God's beautiful plan for humanity that was set in stone from the beginning. Let's start at the beginning with one of the first foreshadowings of Christ, Genesis 3.15. Before we get into it, let's start with a little bit of context. This occurs after the fall of man created a world of sin. God is punishing the serpent, the devil, with the words in this verse. It is amazing that a prophecy of hope is found in words of condemnation. Now, this is a prophecy in two parts in this one verse. First, we have a prophecy concerning the virgin birth and a prophecy concerning the conflict between the serpent and the seed of the woman. And we'll get into who that is in a moment. Now, let's read Genesis 3.15. I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. First, let's talk about the seed of the woman. That refers to the virgin birth of Christ. A woman, Mary, gave birth to Christ without an earthly father. Christ was of the lineage of woman, not of man. While the fall would lead to painful consequences for Eve and her descendants, she and her lineage is also given the privilege of producing the savior of the world without the involvement of man. That savior is Jesus Christ, the savior of the world. And we see all this fulfilled in Matthew 1:18, which summarizes the virgin birth of Christ. Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother, Mary, had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. The virgin birth happened exactly as stated from the beginning in Genesis 3.15. Now let's talk about the more dominant topic of this verse, and that is the conflict between the seed of the serpent and the seed of the woman. This conflict will lead to an exchange of blows leading to injuries. The serpent, the devil, is given a fatal injury to the head. This fatal injury is revealed to us in Hebrews 2.14. Since therefore the children share in flesh and blood, he himself likewise partook of the same thing that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is, the devil. The he referred to in this verse is Christ. When Christ overcomes the power of sin and death through his death, he removed the devil's power, giving Satan a fatal blow and winning this conflict between the seed of the woman, who is Christ, and seed of the serpent, who is the devil. Of course, the last part of the verse talks about Christ, about the seed of the woman being injured on the heel. But the seed of the woman is given a temporary injury, a painful one, but temporary. This refers to Christ's death on the cross, a painful death, a horrible death, but a temporary death. He used the devil's greatest weapon, power over death, And he used that to defeat the devil by he himself dying in our place to absolve us, to remove sin from us and sin's power from us. And as a result, removing the devil's greatest weapon. The devil tried going for a killing blow. They tried to kill our master. They nailed him to a tree. But through that potential moment of triumph comes the greater triumph of our Lord. Dying and then defying death and rising after three days, ultimately, he wins the war. That is definitely portrayed here in Genesis 3.15. 
Salvation has been in the cards since the very beginning. When humanity is plunged into a world of darkness and sin, God provides hope. Hope of righteousness restored through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Celebrating the birth of Christ isn't as simple as celebrating one moment in time, but celebrating a great plan that spans all of human existence. A plan of salvation, redemption, God's relationship with us. So I hope that you change your heart towards Him this Christmas. I'm Chase Carrington. God bless and good night. And remember to keep the Christ in Christmas.